Hello, my name is Oluwati Fumionaike, but you can call me Toff, and welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be talking about my six, seven month update about the MSc, Newcastle, oh, M Newcastle University MSc conversion. What am I saying? <laughs> Today I'm back with an update about the Newcastle University MSc computer science conversion course. I was just saying random words. Um, I've got my notes here, so apologies if I end up looking down. Um, but it's about time that I came back with kind of where I am with the course and I can give people updates and see if I can recommend the course or not. So let me start with timings because timings have been a little bit odd. Um, we, we had from the 21st of December to the 10th of January, we had a three week break. Normal, right? No, because we then had one week to finish off semester one, and then we had another two week break. So we had five weeks for what seemed like no reason. Um, and I, I know that's because of the infection that cannot be named. So I know that if you did this course last year, and likely if you do this course next year, there will be some differences. But I thought that was kind of odd especially as when I applied to do this course, I spoke to my personal tutor and the course director asking if I should do, if I should do maybe a week long work experience somewhere if I could get it over Christmas. And the response I got was no, that everything is, the course is too intense to be trying to pull in other things. And actually considering I had a five week break, that week after when semester one had just finished, would have been perfect timing to do a two week work experience somewhere. So I would recommend if you do do this course, the more work experience, the better, honestly. So if you do have a chance to do a week here or there, I would do it. So after that two week break, we then had a stretch of eight weeks that really felt like I got my money's worth. I'm not gonna lie, it was, it was quite intense, but intense in a good way. An intense way you knew you were learning. So, um, I'll go through the module that we took that took part took place over that eight weeks. So for the first for the whole eight week stretch, we had a group project, which was a software development project. Ooh, I mean group projects are never easy. But honestly, and compared to some of the other teams, our group project was a walk in the park. Everyone was pretty easy to talk to pretty easy to get along with. The only issue is we had a few shy people who weren't, who were a bit younger and didn't really want to talk about their previous experiences. And I, I clearly was team leader for the first part of the project. And that was easy enough dealt with. Like I could just speak to my different uh, team members outside of the course. Like I messaged them all through teams, kind of tried to understand about their previous work experience and assign them as accordingly. So. That was pretty pretty good. We had a few issues with team members not being 100% truthful with how, with how much work they'd done, but it wasn't as bad as some team members who, had, who kept changing the frameworks that they wanted to use. And they ended up the project with one person basically doing the majority of the workload. So I, I think it's like all team projects, it's heads or tails, you never really know. Um, so it's just luck whether you get the right people or the wrong people. So. Quite, there was quite a lot to learn because it was creating an app or website, a uh, food delivery app or website. And we'd not learned about, for example, setting up servers. We'd not learned, for example, about PHP or Apache server, Apache servers. There's so much that we hadn't learned or connecting the front end to the back end. We'd not learned the vast majority of this. And we were expected to go out and learn our own frameworks. So for example, we used Spring Boot we were lucky because we had one person that had used it before and kind of oversaw the Java backend implementation. But yeah, there, that was a lot to learn in, in quite a short period of time, especially considering because for the first three weeks we had, I think it was, let me get the name right. Let me get the name right. We had ad development advanced tech news. Wow, if I tell you I felt like I was back in semester one in the first module and I was just like, what is happening? <laughs> it was it was hard. It was it was 
Okay, I've got the details here because it was a lot of new techniques. So up until this point, all we've basically been taught is how to code. We've not been we've been making programs, but we now we're starting to hear about how to make programs for the real world. We were learning about defensive coding because everything you use will try and uh, change objects you create. So we were learning to return copies for information about objects rather than the actual, let's say, name of a person object. You don't want to return the name, you want to return a copy. So we, we reviewed ideas like inheritance and polymorphism, with inheritance being the idea that you have an interface that represents an object, but you ha might have multiple types of that object, for example. So um, if your interface is a car, you might have like top speed be a, a field in that object. And then if you have different cars, you might have a Ferrari with a top speed of 200 miles an hour, uh, I don't know cars. And then you might have like a Fiat with a top speed of like, let's say 110 miles per hour. Again, that sounds low. So I think I've done something wrong with the numbers because I'm in the UK and we do kilometers anyway. So I don't know why I said miles. Um, while we do kilometers on, do we do kilometers? 70 miles an hour, no, we do miles. Um, I'm gonna start this again. <laughs> no, I'm not, I'm just gonna leave that in there. Um, so yeah, we learned interfaces, we went over polymorphism, we went back over, uh, we went over collections, and collections include maps and, oh, maps, maps and sets, and actually it includes lists, so array lists are also considered collections, and we learned that you can have a hash map or a tree map, where, and all, all of these help with immutability, which I think was the key point of the, this whole module. Creating objects where you know that one object will be unique. So maps and sets help with this because you can't have duplicates, but they help with these in different ways because set, in a set you put an individual object into a set, and that means each object has to be different. So if you're, let's say you're creating bikes um, and you put serial numbers on the bikes, if you put uh, and that's how you tell if a bike is the same or not, using the equals override. If you put a bike into a set and two bikes have the same serial numbers, it won't let you create a new bike. It will just return a copy of the existing bike that has that serial number. And for example, with maps, this is slightly different because a map is, uh, is a collection of almost mini arrays, almost. It's not, that's not the right description. But a map is a collection of uh, individual parts that have two parts and in that part you have a key and you have a value so the key in the map has to be unique so every different key has to be different but you can have the same value mapped to a different key so it, it looks at uniqueness in a different way um, so we had to learn all of this and then apply it to a piece of coursework and I felt brand new <laughs> honestly I that was a difficult piece of coursework but I, I enjoyed it I thought it was a good piece of coursework. Um, so after we had gone through the advanced programming and defensive programming techniques, we were still doing the group projects, but we also had cyber security. Um, and I was I had been really, really, really looking forward to this module because I had no idea what we'd be learning. Um, but it seemed like it was fairly high level in the end, which is a little bit disappointing. But um, we learned about the virtual machine, setting up a virtual machine on Azure, um, using some quite well-known industry tools. So we used Wireshark, we used Nmap. Wireshark is a packet sniffer, so you can kind of go through packets. And if they've not been encrypted, you can see the information that's being sent backwards and forwards. You can see like where the information's come from, where it's going to. Whereas Nmap is more of a scanner, a network scanner. So you can see what computers are on the network, you can uh, see which ports are open on those computers. Um, and basically they taught us how to attack networks or how to figure out, sort of do the recon for attacking networks. But, I, but they were very clear. They were like, do not do this if you are not using a virtual machine because it's illegal. And I really want to put that as, out as a disclaimer. Don't, don't hack people. People will get in trouble, quite a lot of trouble. Don't do it, but maybe look up these tools because they are pretty interesting tools. And if you can set up a, a virtual machine for yourself, do that because it was really fun to do. It's just I thought we'd have more depth. And then we started the first week of HCI, 
which is human computer interaction. So while it's not so much, um, it's not quite, it's not so technical, it's a lot more the history of development and how we've gotten to the personal computer, for example. For example, uh, like Facebook, it's the ethical implications of technology as well. It's security. It's um, how do we how do we get the balance right between security and usability? So they, they showed us this one video where they were saying um, there was a system that was set in place that had a sensor. And if you moved away from the system for more than 30 seconds, you had to log all the way back in. Well, the people that were using it were just blocking the sensor. So they thought that there was a person there at all times. And it's like, well, suddenly this system that was secure isn't secure. So it's like, how do we train people in those situations? Or how do we make a secure system that is usable? So honestly, I've been only done one week of HCI, but I'm pumped. It's really interesting. So that was an overview of what we've been doing in semester two. It's been great. Like, I, I love the course so much. Um, this is so interesting. <laughs> There's just so much to it. Like the internet is no longer like a cloud in my mind. I actually understand what the cloud means and how actually it's just a series of servers that you've never seen. <laughs> and it's just a load of big hardworking computers that sort of keep going day and night. It's, I've loved the course so much. So if I would say, if you're worried about, will I get the information I need from the course? Don't worry about that. There's so much in the course. If you're worried about, is it expensive? I understand that. It's, it's an expensive course. So if you, I would definitely save up before because you want to be able to do fun things as well while you're there with your friends. But um, I, would, I would still recommend it. Uh, I mean, take it from me. I joined this course with no intention of being a developer. I, I thought I was just going to become a technical business analyst or a technical product owner. That Those were my aims. Whereas now, I'm almost 100% sure that I would love to be a developer. This course is sort of, or it's not even, I'm not even almost 100% sure because I have a job. Ah! I managed to get a graduate job in technical consulting for when this course ends. And, and I know part of that course, it's like, it's a rotation scheme. So part of that course will include software development. And rather than being worried, I'm actually really, really excited to be a part of this course. I'm honestly so excited. So, and I remember last time, three months in, I said, I don't know if I can recommend this course if I don't have a job yet. Well, I have a job and I'm really excited and the company seems lovely and the interview process was really well done. So yeah, I can sit here. I, Oluwata Fumio Naiko, can sit here and wholeheartedly say that you should do this course. <laughs> um, yeah, but that's all I've got to say about the six, seven month update. Hope you're all doing well and have a lovely day.